Hey heroes, welcome to another mighty episode of History of the Marvel Universe. This channel is sponsored in part by Patreon supporters. If you would like to vote in monthly polls that help decide what topics get covered on the channel, you can sign up for $1 per month over at patreon.com slash marymarvelite. The link is in the description below, along with other places you can find me. This week's story begins with a boy named Carl Creel, who was born and raised in the Bronx in New York City. Carl's mother believed he could accomplish great things and did her best to set him on the right path. But even as a kid, Carl spent a lot of time on the streets running with tough crowds. He never much cared for his father, but did learn about cars from him and received his first pair of boxing gloves. However, his home life got decidedly worse after his mother passed away. It was following this that his father grew resentful and became physically abusive. Carl lived in fear of his old man for several years and would have rather lived with his aunt Betsy. He grew more violent as time passed, getting into fistfights with other kids on the streets. Finally, when he was 16 years old, Carl's father swung and... Carl swung back, realizing that he had grown stronger than him. Of course, the old man realized this too, and no longer able to push him around, kicked his son out of the house. After that, Creel lived on the streets and in the gym, making use of his considerable strength. He became a boxer under the ring name Rocky Davis, sometimes called Dynamite Davis. This was in honor of his cousin, Rockwell Davis, who Creel had a good relationship with. However, he eventually earned another moniker, one that would stick with him, Crusher Creel. As an adult, he became a heavyweight contender who was just as good at scaring his opponents as he was at knocking them out. But Creel's most noteworthy bout was a key fight against battling Jack Murdoch. The match was long and bloody with neither man willing to yield to the other. But in the end, despite being roughly 20 years older, Murdoch stood victorious, costing Creel the championship. However, Crusher's viciousness caught the attention of men who thought that they could use him. Soon, he was hired muscle, roughing up people in a protection racket run by Leland Owlsley, better known as the Owl. Creel was no stranger to crime before this, having performed several burglaries, but now it was becoming a career. This would eventually catch up with him, although there are some conflicting reports about how he was busted. One story claims that he was arrested after killing his opponent in a boxing match. Another that he was caught while working for the Owl and booked for aggravated assault and extortion. Whether one or both of these accounts is true, Creel soon found his new home in an upstate prison. Despite his strength and his penchant for violence, prison life was difficult for Creel at first. After a number of scraps, he learned how to hold his own, but then he was noticed by a higher power. Loki, the Norse god of mischief, was looking for a pawn to use against his brother Thor. To this end, he placed an enchantment into Creel's drink, transforming it into a magical potion that endowed him with superpowers. Energized, Creel shot up and began making his escape from prison. The nature of his new abilities was soon revealed when the guards attempted to open fire on him. He could absorb the properties of anything he came into contact with, and his body became like steel as the bullets bounced off him. This power also extended to the ball and chain he started carrying and so it didn't take long for him to smash through the stone wall and break free. Soon he came face to face with Thor just as Loki intended. The two fought a prolonged battle with the Thunder God finding it difficult to damage an opponent who could absorb whatever he threw at him. Creel's physical strength even increased to match Thor's when the two made contact. As the fight went on, Creel began absorbing the properties of multiple substances from the Earth itself, growing larger and more powerful. In order to stop him, Thor used his enchanted hammer to transmute those elements into helium. 
This caused Creel to take on a gaseous form and, unable to control himself in such a state, floated up into the atmosphere. He was later located again by Loki, who restored him to human form and returned him to Earth. Loki set Creel against Thor once again, and they battled across downtown Manhattan. During this fight, the Absorbing Man even demonstrated the ability to take on the properties of Uru, the mystical metal that Thor's hammer was made of. Although he didn't technically lift the hammer from the ground, instead pulling it from Thor's grasp, only for Thor to start recalling it back to his own hand before it was dropped. This unique combination of factors seemed to kind of bypass the hammer's enchantment as Creel was able to throw it as Thor pulled it back to himself sending it flying harder than Thor intended and crashing into a wall behind him. By absorbing metal and concrete from the surrounding buildings, Creel was also able to increase his size and mass many times over. Although evenly matched in raw power, Thor was able to gain the upper hand through skill and combat experience. But this encounter ended when Loki transported the Absorbing Man to Asgard. Together, they launched an assault on Odin's throne room in an attempt to seize control of the Golden Realm. Initially, this seemed to work as Odin surrendered his vaunted Imperial Scepter to Loki. However, Creel then betrayed Loki and attempted to claim this prize for himself. Odin then revealed that the scepter itself was powerless and banished both Creel and Loki into deep space. They floated side by side for a time, but eventually Loki regained control of his physical form and left his pawn to his fate. Creel later found his own path home when a racing comet passed by. Using his powers to join with the comet, he was able to steer himself back towards Earth. As the large object approached the planet, a manned rocket ship was sent to prevent it from doing any damage. Creel seized his opportunity to leap from the comet and cling to the ship. The pilot caught sight of the Absorbing Man, who attempted to kill him before the ship even landed, but unfortunately for Creel, the pilot was actually Bruce Banner, who transformed into the Incredible Hulk. The two battled as the rocket crashed, and like with Thor, Creel was able to absorb the Hulk's strength to match him. He was even able to absorb energy from the ship's nuclear engine, but revert it to normal when this energy ran out. Creel actually gained the upper hand in that fight and used the Hulk's strength to lift an entire hillside worth of rock. However, as the Hulk transformed back into Bruce Banner, Creel's strength decreased as well. He attempted to absorb power from the boulder he was lifting over his head, but his stone body began to crack under the pressure. In the end, the whole thing collapsed and Creel's broken body was buried under a heap of rock. But even after being shattered, he could be put back together, and the Absorbing Man was later awakened again by Loki. Unsurprisingly, Loki compelled Creel to go on a rampage and battle Thor once again. This time Thor defeated Creel by tricking him into absorbing the properties of water and dispersing into liquid. Creel nearly perished in the river, but was able to make himself solid again when he came into contact with a rock downstream. He challenged Thor again, transforming his body into living Uru by absorbing the power of his hammer yet again. This time Creel gained the upper hand and it seemed like Thor really was defeated. However, the Thunder God then tricked Creel into absorbing the much weaker properties of a toy Mjolnir replica. After that, Thor had Creel placed within a simple cardboard box so that any time he tried to break out he would become weak like the cardboard itself and hence unable to. For the first time since becoming the Absorbing Man, Creel was back in a jail cell. But the cardboard box he was trapped in would soon be defeated by a leaky pipe. Touching the water, Creel was able to turn into liquid and this time make his way over to the metal door so that he could absorb the properties of solid steel and thus make his escape. But shortly after that, he was teleported away by a trio who called themselves They Who Wield Power. Now, there's a bit of a long story there, but the short version is that they plot it to cause violent geophysical activity to stimulate an ancient blaze called the Flame of Life. One of these earth-shaking schemes was to pit the Absorbing Man against the Incredible Hulk. 
They also provided him with a supervillain suit, but Creel was less than enthused about it. He and the Hulk battled in a building under construction as it fell apart around them. The Absorbing Man continued to demonstrate the versatility of his powers when the Hulk threw a box of hot metal rivets at him, only for Creel to absorb them and transform his body into near-molten metal. Finally, when the building itself collapsed, Creel attempted to reach out and absorb the metal, but inadvertently grabbed a shard of broken window, turning himself to glass, and causing him to shatter into pieces upon hitting the ground. Initially, this seemed like the end of the Absorbing Man, and his fragmented shards were indistinguishable from the rest of the debris. Over the following months, they were swept away with the rubble and dumped into a landfill. And after months of trying, Creel succeeded in pulling his physical form back together once the shards were all in the same place. After that, he was able to return to human form completely restored. Tired of superheroes, he decided he wanted to flee the country and head to South America. To this end, he robbed a clothing store to get some travel money, as well as a new pair of pants to replace the damaged ones he was wearing. He also kidnapped the clerk, a woman named Sandy Herkowitz, and planned on bringing her with him. Fortunately for her, before she was brought onto a ship, the two were seen by the vigilante archer, Hawkeye. He called in his teammates, and soon the Absorbing Man was facing an entire squad of Avengers. Now, depending on his intentions, the kidnapping of Sandy Herkowitz might well be one of the worst things Creel has attempted to do. Although, during his battle with the Avengers, he did release her rather than hold her hostage, apparently because he didn't want her to get hurt. This is not to excuse any of his actions, but rather to point out an early example of him perhaps being not quite as irredeemable as some other villains, an idea that would be explored in later stories. While he clashed with the Avenger Vision, Creel displayed the ability to absorb his intangibility powers. However, he didn't know how to control them, and fell through the dock into the water. He then escaped by changing to a liquid form again and washing out to sea. He managed to keep his molecules from dissipating into the ocean, but doing so took an extreme mental toll. He washed up on Easter Island, where he regained a solid form, but suffered from amnesia and paranoia. He couldn't remember who he was, but had a vague recollection that some group was the cause of his suffering. When Bruce Banner coincidentally washed up on that same island after swimming from Japan as the Hulk, Creel suspected that he may have been one of his old enemies and took him captive. What followed was a pretty harrowing sequence in which Creel forced Banner to crawl into a tiny hole in the side of a rock face. Not only was the tunnel inside tight and dark, but it tilted downward, eventually leading to a pool of water that Creel forced Banner into. Finally, he emerged into a cave littered with centuries-old skeletons where Creel was staying. When the Absorbing Man later fell asleep, Banner attempted to make his escape through another tunnel, but as it led upwards, the space narrowed and Banner ended up trapped in the dark. Of course, the stress of the situation triggered Banner's transformation into the Hulk, freeing him. Creel clashed with the Hulk, the sight of his old foe triggering his memories to return. During this fight, Creel started absorbing strength from the entire island. However, the Green Goliath delivered a powerful blow, interrupting Creel's transformation and sending him flying. Mentally addled by this, the Absorbing Man fell comatose, landing in the sea where he became an island himself. Eventually, a group of people tried to settle there, but a fire they lit caused Creel to awaken. They saw him as some kind of god or spirit, and so Creel decided to exploit them. After growing weary of their worship, he used gold stolen from the islanders to fund his return to the United States. He targeted the mutant songstress Dazzler as part of a plan to take revenge on the Avengers. When she defended herself with her ability to convert sound into weaponized light, Creel absorbed the blast and transformed himself into a giant creature of living light. This led Dazzler to seek allies and ultimately team up with the inhuman king Black Bolt. Since Dazzler's abilities were powered by sound waves, Black Bolt's devastating voice was
was able to supercharge her enough to defeat the Absorbing Man. Following this, Crusher Creel was one of many supervillains to be abducted by the Beyonder as part of his secret wars. We've been over those events multiple times on the channel before, so I won't belabor the point here, but if you want a more detailed explanation of all that, I recommend my video about Owen Reese, the Molecule Man. The important thing for today is that during this whole superhuman hoopla, Creel met the first woman he really fell in love with, Mary McFerrin, better known as Titania. She was pretty new to the supervillain scene at this time, so for the details on her origin and her initial meeting with Creel, you can watch my video focusing on her. After getting back to Earth, the two operated as a couple and were usually found together. They briefly joined Baron Zemo's Masters of Evil, and around the time of his infamous attack on Avengers Mansion, were sent to finish off a hospitalized Hercules, but were defeated by Ant-Man and the Wasp. Loki later used Creel as a pawn once again, tricking him into thinking that Thor killed Titania. This time Thor was weakened because of a curse from the goddess Hela, but was victorious over Creel when he used his hammer to send him to another dimension. The Absorbing Man was trapped in that limbo for what felt like weeks before he realized that time didn't always flow forward there. Eventually he found the vortex that brought him there, repeating itself in reverse and used it to return to Earth. Thinking Titania was gone, but tired of revenge, he moved to Vegas and sought employment as hired muscle. This led to a confrontation with Mr. Fixit, a gray-skinned persona of the Hulk who also worked as an enforcer. However, this gray Hulk was vulnerable to sunlight, and when Creel absorbed his strength, he also absorbed his weakness. This battle ended when Creel instead took on the properties of Concrete and the Hulk smashed him to pieces. But as we already demonstrated, the Absorbing Man is able to reassemble himself after being broken while in a transmogrified state. He then clashed with the hero Quasar, who possessed powerful cosmic weapons called the Quantum Bands. During this fight, he was even able to duplicate the cosmic power of the bands. However, Quasar was able to defeat him by forcing him to absorb more and more energy until he imploded. Of course, he simply returned to New York as living energy particles before reassembling himself into a human form. He attacked Thor once again, although this time it wasn't technically the original, but another man named Eric Masterson who was filling in for him. By this point, Creel had owned his powers to the point where he could hold his form even while absorbing non-solids. And it was during this fight that the Absorbing Man was reunited with Titania. Ultimately, Masterson decided to let them go if they agreed to stay out of trouble. And while Creel was indeed involved with some other criminal activities, which we don't really have time to cover today, he and Titania eventually married and attempted to settle down and go straight. But for more on how that actually turned out, and their relationship in general, you can watch my video about Titania. And if you want to know more about the Absorbing Man specifically, then be sure to let me know in the comments. But that is all I've got for you this week, so if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and share it on your favorite social media. Also, feel free to let me know what other topics you'd like me to cover in the comments. As always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to other places you can find me, including my Patreon page, my Discord server, and my Twitch channel. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!